open this up and show you what it looks like. Here's the hippopotamus mold. You can see where the batteries created these fingers to hold the mold together. So this is a two-part block mold that I have the instructions for in my book, How to Make Resin Toys. So we have this kind of mold, so that's a block block mold. These are glove molds, these little orange molds. Boink, boink, boink. Here's another one. This one has a nice base made out of plaster. So I use plaster of Paris. Like plaster gauze for making like casts on your arm. That holds it. That. So there's a glove mold. And the swamp bogger over here is upside down. There's the swamp bogger's mold. And then this kind of mold over here is a mold putty mold. It's a Philly Lou bird. These molds there, you push them right on and they harden really quick. It's a difficult but fast mold to make. So those are the three kinds of molds that I teach and teach you how to make, uh, show you how to make in my book. We have the glove mold, two-part block mold, and then these putty molds. I'm going to cast these blocks, cast this block mold. So the first thing I'm going to do, put cardboard before I rubber band it, because I find that if I just rubber band the rubber band will distort the shape of the rubber mold and then I'll get all this leaking out of the seams of the liquid resin. So the cardboard keeps the edges nice and, nice and tight. I try to rubber band it. I look inside there to make sure the seams aren't off, so I have to s just try to use the light and look deep inside there and see that my mold is uh, not creating this weird wrong edge. You just want the edges to meet together to make your toy so it doesn't have this big seam down the middle. That's why the two part molds, they create a seam on your toys. You might have to clean up with an X-Acto knife or something afterwards. So I like the glove molds. The glove molds can be seamless and you just sand the bottom of the toy that you cast in there. There you go. I also cast in a tray like this so if anything spills it's easy to deal with. It doesn't spill all over your world. Try to get my rubber bands on here before I cast. Couple cups. That's pretty clean. Get myself a popsicle stick. Now, this product is by Smooth On. It's called Smoothcast 300. It's a bright white liquid plastic. It's bright white. You need equal parts of this stuff. It's juicy. I don't want to spill it. So I'm just going to put a little bit in here. There we go. Now I just want an equal amount of the other one. So I'm going to put this blue one away. Grab the yellow one. It's a two-part system. Now I gotta pour an equal amount of this hardener here in there. And then I compare them. Sometimes I just pour a little bit too much and then I can pour it back into the bottle easy. Jeez, that's pretty close that time. And again I try to see it. Make sure they're even. 
I also know when I pour this one into this one, not all of it's going to come out. It's kind of gooey. So I try to I allow the clear one to have a little bit more. Now, if you're going to mix color into your resin, you would mix it now into this clear one. You would stir in your, your color into here. Now, I'm, I'm going to cast white toys today, so I'm not adding any color. But you would add it to here, stir it thoroughly, and then mix these together. You'll see that the uh, resin, when you're stirring the resin, it'll start really cloudy. You want to scrape the edges so that you get all of the stuff that's on the cup to mix. And the more you stir, the clearer it gets. So you can see all these streaks. And it becomes kind of clear. Now you only have like a minute to be able to stir and pour this. This will get hard no matter what. Because it will catalyze. It will get really hot and catalyze. Alright, so now I'm stirred. I'm going to pour into this mold. Here we go, little Yepopotamus. Eat that. Now, Yepopotamus I cast in two different pores because he's got an air bubble in his chin. I'll get one in here. To the Philly Lou Bird. I'm going to shake him around before he's full because his beak gets a bubble. And bubbles are a real issue. Try not always design to go with the flow. It's not always easy. Here we go. There comes the little bush bat. Fill up his wings. Ghost, swamp bugger over here. Oh yeah, I want to do this like this mold broke, but I want to do it as a to see what the face is like. I still have more uh, mold medium, so I'm going to shake this around a little bit. If I can get that Yapopotamus chin to cast right. Pour some more in there. The thick spots will harden before the thin spots. So a lot of resin will cure fast. And just a little bit of resin will take a long time to cure. You can see the resin start to turn opaque white. My cup, look at my cup. My cup's already plastic. So the thicker it is, the faster it, it sets. So this thick part's already white. You can still see it's gooey around the edge where it's thin. Now, also, because of that, I can play with these a little bit. I can, like, try to make sure that the air bubble doesn't happen in the inside that character. Yeah, there's nothing left for me to cast out of that, so I'll just throw that cup away. Now the Philly Lou Bird, I might set him upside down now, so he, he, won't, he won't spill. I can turn him upside down, and I know that his beak will still be liquid. So I'll shake him around, because you can see over here. I can judge by the thin wings that the thin parts of these castings will still be liquid. So I just move my molds around if I have any any crazy issues. If you have bubbles like this, you'll end up sanding all this kind of stuff away later. So that's it. You can see that it's starting to cast up here in the wings. Now 
and later on I'll cast this flat now. So I cast the epipotamus like this and it feeds into his uh, jaw. So his, uh, his jaw has a bit of an undercut and he gets bubbles underneath his jaw. So I'll grab this guy. So when he casts, he'll get a bubble here. So when I cast him, I have to set him like this and then this whole front of his face fills up the first cast and then the second cast his feet are flat by the second pour so that's he has to be poured twice just to get around that little bubble that I couldn't create a vent I carved a vent here and it still wasn't enough to uh, take care of him alright I'm going to take a couple of these out some of them still need to have more resin poured in them to be filled to the top um, so, I'm going to take this swamp bogger out of there. Oh, come on, nice. Now, this can be cut away with an X-Acto knife or sanded on like 100 grit sandpaper, and it'll uh, smooth up real nice. This one, this little push bat here. Get that mold out of there. There we go. So now this is just ten minutes later after pouring. So this smooth cast three hundred sets up really fast. Pretty cool. Now it's ready to be cast again. So the rest of these I'm going to pour some resin in, so I'm going to put on my, uh, my, my nice gloves, my fancy gloves, and pour another set of resin. Alright, here we go. A little of this, a little of that. Now this stuff once it's mixed together, it's going to harden in 10 minutes. That's that. That's how a catalyst is. And it's pretty easy to clean off most surfaces, sealed surfaces, painted surfaces. The stuff doesn't stick to it, so if you just let it harden, you can pop it off most like surfaces. But if you spill the stuff before you mix it together, it's just a sticky, icky, gooey thing. So don't spill this stuff when you're working with it. Make sure you paper towel it up if you do. Clean it up good. This stuff can be a real mess before it's mixed up. After it's mixed up, it's nice lovely plastic. So here we go. You can see it the way it's all mixed together. It looks like all kinds of little hairs or spider webs or something in there. Go through a lot of cups and popsicle sticks and things. Every time I go grocery shopping, I buy myself a whole new set of cups. There, now once this is mixed up, I'm going to pour. the rest of my yuppopotamus. There, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. See that? See how I just spilled a little bit? I'm glad I have my gloves on. Because that will get about 400 degrees when it, when it turns to plastic. Now, here we go. Fill the yuppopotamus up. Oh, this poor spout is his feet. Usually the base or the feet of your character is a good place for your pour spout. Pour this is another little pet animal. These are the four feet. I'm only going to stop when the resin comes up to the top of the feet. There it comes. There, 
now he's got four legs. Like a fancy little beast. His molds it didn't quite end up going to the top last time. I'll try to see if I can get this bat to fill up. I've used my resin well. Make sure if I have any drops left to get it on there. Very nice. Cool, alright, so it's been like 10 more minutes and I should be able to take these things out. Now this guy, he gets bubbles in his eyes. So let's see if this one casts well or if he's got bubbles in his eyes. So you could kill a man with that. Let's see. Yeah, he's got bubbles in his eyes. See how hard it is? He's got those little bubbles. So, so that's as small as he is. He still causes me trouble. Away with you, like that. All right, now this bush bat. Let's see. This guy comes out pretty good almost every time. I like the bush bat. Yeah. But even he got a little teeny bubble in his lip. Slip. Alright. It's like Kung Fu. So let's press mold of this army guy. I'm gonna let him harden up. Still gonna let him like harden up a bit. His base is really thin, so that's the last thing to harden in this set. So I'm just going to let him sit in his mold. Keep cooking. Here we have... This is a mold. Oops, crashing things around. Ah. There's like this little guy that lives in here. I'm gonna wake him up. Get him out of hibernation. Terrible little creature. That's how that, that mob goes together. Now, we gotta see if the Yuppopotamus is in there. Hello, anybody home? We've come to set you free. Hope we're not too late. You can breathe in there. Alright. Take off the support cardboard. And his ears kind of lock this whole thing together, so I gotta slowly open up the feet. Move those little fingers out of the mold. And then lift him up and out. that. Yup. So you can see. See his chin has this vent. That's the vent. It allows the air bubble to get out of his chin. So instead of having a big hole there, he now has this like little strip of plastic and I just break it off. Clean it up with an X-Acto knife. It's really easy. Easy fix. So there's the hippopotamus. I'll show you. See, this is his uh, his mold. This is that vent that I just broke off his chin. I carved that out with a carving knife. Try to fix his air bubble. So there it is. That's casting into the silicone molds. It's three different types of molds.
So make sure and check out my book, How to Make Resin Toys. You can get it at gemtoy.com. Just check out the books there. Thanks for checking out the video. Have fun making toys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.